Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for this live chat. Um, I like to talk about issues <laughs> that relate to where I am personally in my monthly cycle. That's because I'm, I'm experiencing these issues right now, so I'm thinking about them and um, I'm thinking about ways to deal with them and um, that way I can share them with you. In fact, <laughs> a little known fact, when I wrote the first edition of my book, 28 Days, What Your Cycle Reveals About Your Love Life, Moods, and Potential, uh, which was published in 2005, when I wrote that book, I actually tried to match up each cycle day with where I was in my own cycle as I was writing it, because I felt that gave me um, greater insight and a better ability to explain things, because I was experiencing it right then and there. Okay. So that said, it's my premenstrual week four right now, uh, which means it's the six days leading up to my period. So it's my premenstrual phase, and I, and I noticed something that I think is really universal with everybody. Um, tell me if this sounds familiar. You enter your premenstrual phase, and then suddenly you start using different language when talking to yourself, specifically negative language. You start calling yourself bad names, like dummy or stupid. Um, you start asking yourself, how could you be so stupid to do this thing? You just, you're hard on yourself. Um, also, maybe you've, you know, you focused on everything that's gone wrong. And you think, how come the universe waits until my premenstrual phase for it to land this pile of bricks on my head? You know, for this bad thing to happen, for that bad thing to happen, nothing bad happens in the rest of my cycle. Why does the universe wait for all bad things to happen during my premenstrual phase? Or maybe a, another thing that you do during your premenstrual phase, I'm also guilty of, is you predict things. Um, and the prediction is always bad. <laughs> you know, the outcome is always going to be negative. Um, for instance, um, <laughs> for instance, you think that a, a job interview won't work out. Um, or uh, an opportunity will be bad. Like, for instance, you, you might not submit your resume for a job because you think, I could never get that job. It's completely, you know, beyond my scope, or I would, I'm a bad interviewer. Whatever it is, you, you predict that it's going to be a bad outcome. And I, I had this, you know, this happened to me, again, this is all, like, comes from my own personal experience because I have a cycle, too. And... This morning, I woke up with a pain in my side, <laughs> and it's my premenstrual phase, so immediately I went to catastrophic organ failure. Clearly, it's catastrophic organ failure, <laughs> or some other, like, horrible, horrible thing, but most likely, it is just a pulled muscle from sleeping wrong, or even more likely, just gas. So... I just want to explain that um, when these negative uh, viewpoints about yourself and outlook arise and, and you, these negative predictions arise in your premenstrual phase, you're not alone. Um, it happens to many women and furthermore, it's natural. And let me explain very briefly why it happens, very briefly. Um, during your premenstrual phase, estrogen plunges. And as your body's level of estrogen plunges, it takes down the level of certain mood moderating brain chemicals, such as serotonin. Um, so when those brain chemicals also get depleted, they make you more prone to a negative outlook. Now, you can have a positive outlook um, during your premenstrual phase in any phase of your cycle. What I like to remind women is that um, during the first half of your cycle, when estrogen is rising and the first half spans from the first day of your period through ovulation, and estrogen is rising, you have the hormonal winds at your back. So I like to remind women that that just means it makes things a little easier. Yes, you have more energy. Yes, your memory is sharper. Yes, your mood is higher. But that's because you have estrogen pushing you along. It naturally raises certain um, brain chemicals, the levels of certain brain chemicals, and other, it also affects other body processes in a way that impacts your energy, mood, brain power, et cetera, in positive ways. But that does not mean you can't feel these things in the other days of your cycle. You know, have high energy or good mood. It just means you have to work at it a little bit 
harder. It means you have to put in a little bit more effort because you don't have those hormonal winds at your back pushing you along. But there are other ways to get what you want. So today's talk is about the premenstrual counterpunch. And by that, I mean countering premenstrual negativity caused by declining estrogen. Now, I'm talking about the specifically the six days leading up to your period, but in many women, this negativity starts honestly right after ovulation. And the reason for that is because uh, directly after ovulation, estrogen plunges. Now, not a lot of women realize this, but estrogen dips twice in your monthly cycle. For a few days right after ovulation, then it rises again. And then during your premenstrual six days, it plunges steadily. So estrogen goes down, it goes up, and then it goes down again. So some women feel this negativity starting right after ovulation. They may also be more sensitive to progesterone. Progesterone rises and falls during the second half of your cycle, but ultimately it's a it's a it's level is elevated throughout the second half of your cycle. And some women who are sensitive to progesterone, um, this hormone can make you feel sad, and that sadness can cause a bit of uh, a bit of negativity. So let's talk about um, this premenstrual counterpunch, whether you're starting from ovulation through the day before your next period, or it just happens premenstrually, the six days leading up to your period. So if you feel that you are talking to yourself in a negative way, again, I am guilty of this. I will drop a book or I recently um, ran right into a wooden bench in the middle of a restaurant, which was really embarrassing and painful. So that was super fun. Um, and I immediately said, are you idiot to myself? And I caught myself and I heard myself. I said, you know what? You're not an idiot. It was a, an accident. So I did a premenstrual counterpunch. I heard myself call myself a negative name, and then I backtracked. And I went one step further. For the rest of the day, I thought of reasons to compliment myself. You know what, Gab? That was a really good idea. Good for you. You know what, Gab? That was a great workout. Way to go. And I thought of other ways to cheer myself on. Again, premenstrual counterpunch because I knew I was more prone to talking badly about myself. So also with um, premenstrual predictions, <laughs> you know, those negative predictions, where, you know, the pain in your side is suddenly, you know, catastrophic organ failure instead of, you know, probably just gas. Um, you have to talk yourself down from that. You have to talk yourself down from thinking that the worst is going to happen. Again, this isn't your fault, it's just, a uh, side effect of lower brain chemicals. That's it. But you can overcome that by thinking of past times. This is actually a really effective method. Thinking of times in your past when you had a similar issue and it was okay. Everything turned out okay. Research has shown that this works because it reminds you that there is a positive outcome that is just as likely, <laughs> probably more likely, um, than a negative outcome. Again, premenstrual counterpunch. When you feel like you are predicting the worst, think back to the past when the worst didn't happen and you actually had a positive outcome. And the other um, premenstrual negativity is focusing on all the things that are going wrong. <laughs> the other day, if you if you're um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a lot of my uh, a lot of my premenstrual problems. Um, one of them was I opened the refrigerator the refrigerator door the other day to take out pizza that um, a friend had made for us, and he carefully put it in this box, and I felt so bad. He told me all about how he went out and bought these pizza boxes and made this hand. Um, this this handmade pizza in a special way with a great recipe he was going to share and he packaged it up for us specifically and you know I had some then I put the rest in the fridge and I opened the fridge pulled out the pizza box and the pizza box caught on the door and the whole pizza fell face down on the floor yeah, not a great premenstrual moment for Gab. <laughs> I was really sad about that. 
So if you see it on my Instagram, you'll see the pizza on the floor. Um, and I thought, of course it happens during my premenstrual week. That was a knee-jerk reaction to say that because when I stepped back and I thought, you know what, bad things happen every week of your cycle. They do. Just It's not the universe targeting that one phase in your cycle. It just feels like it because we're more prone to focus on negativity when these certain mood moderating brain level uh, brain chemicals are reduced so we see more of the negativity around us we focus on it more and we dwell on it more meaning we mull it over longer so i thought you know what a really good idea is to make a list of five things that have gone right in my day and that's what i do during my premenstrual week to try to counterpunch that that viewpoint, that negative viewpoint, um, to turn it around, I need to counterpunch by writing five, at least five things that went right during my day. Um, so I wanted to share these tips with you. They work for me. They're easy to do. And it helps you just become more aware of the negative mindset that you do tend to have. This is not a given. Every woman is different. It depends on your your sensitivity to descending estrogen and other factors that impact your mood, such as how healthy your diet is, how much you've been exercising, if you've been challenged by a painful condition or some other challenge. But generally speaking, generally speaking, during a premenstrual week, you tend to have a negative outlook. And you can talk to yourself negatively, focus on what's going wrong, and have negative predictions. Um, that make you spiral further down. But if you can counterpunch, if you can be aware that this is happening, understand why it's happening because of the brain levels caused by descending estrogen, and then counterpunch each one with positivity, it can really go a long way toward making your premenstrual phase a lot happier. I know because it works for me. And if it works for me, just normal gab, I know it's going to work for you. So if you have any tips for countering premenstrual negativity, I'd love to hear them. You can include them in the comments section down below, or you can email me at gabrielle at myhormonology.com. I would love to hear them and maybe even share them. And uh, if you want to learn more about me and what I do, you can visit my website, myhormonology.com. I've got lots of free tools there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Till next time.